Texting. One, two, three. Texting. What? I'm waiting for people to be quiet. Sorry. No, it's not just you. I have my new shoes on. Is this like, is this really flexible? Is this flexible? Does this look flexible to you? Okay, I probably shouldn't have done that. There's somebody out in the hallway right now. Ooh, I got my free and clear anti-dandruff shampoo with 2% zinc pyrethione. Zinc pyrethione is a great anti-dandruff ingredient and topically it may actually produce or help promote hair growth, which is excellent for many, many people. Some people actually experience significant hair growth just using a zinc pyrethione ingredient. This is 2%. So I really, I really do like this. I mean, it's a great dandruff treatment. So highly recommend the free and clear. There are no fragrances, dyes, um, proteins, parabens, or formaldehyde. So hi everybody, it's Brandon. I hope you're doing well. Thank you for joining me for another skincare vlog. If you don't know who I am, my name is Brandon. I am a medical writer. I've written over a thousand medical articles, all of which you can find freely online, most of which have been focused in the dermatology and skincare research fields. And I will leave a link down below for, so you can check out those articles. But today I'm gonna to be talking about a very important, very hot topic that many people want to know. It's a question that's on everybody's mind and it's basically, can you make your own tinted mineral sunscreen? And the answer is maybe. And I say that because I have been doing this off and on for the past few months. I, but I have the, um, the CeraVe SPF 30 mineral sunscreen, as well as the SPF 50 that I use occasionally. These mineral sunscreens, they use, they leave a significant white cast on the skin. They're definitely not appropriate for darker skin tones. Even people with like my skin tone, it leaves a very significant white cast. That being said, the zinc oxide, titanium dioxide are extremely durable for protecting against UVA and UVB, the wavelengths of from the sun, the radiation from the sun that penetrate deeply and cause skin cancer as well as skin aging. Tinted sunscreens utilize what is known as iron oxides, which are basically basically added pigment to the to the to the sunscreen, to the mineral sunscreen to camouflage that white cast and help to even out skin tone and blur imperfections. And iron oxides, in addition to the UVA protective qualities of zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, iron oxides can potentially help to protect against blue light, which is the wavelength of visible light that comes from our phones, our computers, our tablets, basically our electronic screens. Research shows now can actually penetrate our skin deeply, similar to UV, produce reactive oxygen species or oxidative stress in the skin, and potentially facilitate the visible aging process, namely the degradation of collagen and elastin in the skin. So having a tinted mineral sunscreen that's protecting against UVA, UVB, and even visible light from both the sun as well as electronic devices is a powerful tool that we can have in regard to anti aging. Now the thing about tinted mineral sunscreens is that they are on the pricey side and that that being said I will still invest in a good tinted mineral sunscreen that I like like the Elta MD physical tinted sunscreen or the MD solar science sciences mineral tinted cream both of which I really really like and highly recommend they're only mineral they don't have any chemical ingredients in them or skincare ingredients in them so it's going to provide just that protective blocking agent against the, the sun, the UVA and the UVB. But sometimes you may be in a pinch and maybe you only have a mineral sunscreen and you don't really want that white cast. And so there are ways in which you can navigate around that and circumvent the that significant white cast that is imparted by these sunscreens. And that is by adding your own tint or your own iron oxides. Now, generally you don't want to be mixing moisturizers with sunscreens or you don't want to be mixing sunscreens with different sunscreens because it will potentially potentially impact how it sets up on the skin. It will impact the SPF factor on the skin, particularly chemical sunscreens. You don't want to be, you don't want to be mixing chemical sunscreens together because things like, for example, octanoxate is a chemical UVB filter. And when mixed with a sunscreen that has avabenzone, if you're, if you're just doing a, a DIY project at home and you're mixing these sunscreens, octanoxate can seriously degrade avabenzone. Avabenzone is a, a chemical filter that 
filters out UVA, which are the rays that age the skin. And avabenzone is already susceptible to degradation on its own. So it's, it, it's really important that you're not mixing sunscreens together. But there are ingredients out there and, and really products out there that provide just the iron oxides, in addition to maybe even more titanium dioxide, theoretically, at least potentially, mix with another sunscreen that's just purely zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. Those ingredients aren't likely going to interfere with each other. I'm not a cosmetic chemi chemist, I'm not a clinical dermatologist, but based upon the research we have now, or at least the lack thereof, there doesn't seem to be a problem with mixing iron oxides from one product with a mineral sunscreen, especially in low quantities. It's, it's not really going to interfere with how the product sets up on your skin or the SPF factor, because again, there's some there's certain products, and I'll mention them in just a minute, how you can mix these to create a tinted mineral sunscreen. There are certain products that contain those iron oxides, just the iron oxides, in addition to titanium dioxide just to boost that the SPF quality of your of your sunscreen at baseline. So let me just show you how I do it. So I start first off with the CeraVe. I tend to, I, I like this mineral sunscreen, this pure mineral sunscreen by CeraVe because while it leaves a significant white cast, like I said previously, it's extremely moisturizing. It's not thick and chalky like a lot of other mineral sunscreens, which I really like. It also contains ceramides, which are which really help to improve the skin barrier and the moisture barrier within the skin. There's no fragrance, there's no oils, it's non-greasy, but it's definitely very moisturizing. I prefer this even more than the tinted CeraVe sunscreen, which I reviewed previously. I did not like that at all. It's too orange for me. I'm still using it up now and then, but I, I don't really use that as frequently as I use this one when I mix it with a with iron oxides that I buy separately. The two products that I use for adding pigment to the sunscreen are the Maybelline Dream BB Fresh Broad Spectrum SPF 30 Beauty Balm. And this is basically a titanium dioxide sunscreen BB cream. It only contains titanium dioxide, it's SPF 30. And even though SPF 30 can be really great, titanium dioxide on its own isn't great for UVA protection. So it's not gonna provide you the robust protection in against UVA, the aging rays, as something like zinc oxide. So I don't recommend just relying on a titanium dioxide sunscreen alone for your broad spectrum UVA and UVB protection. I mentioned that in uh, the Pyeongkong Yule Korean sunscreen review that you know, even though it's an SPF 40 or 45 or something like that, it's only titanium dioxide, so it's not gonna have that same UVA protection as something like zinc oxide. But this Beauty Balm, it's just titanium dioxide with iron oxides added to it. And I got the medium to deep sheer tint. This is extremely too dark for me and my skin type. But when I mix it with the white, the, the white zinc oxide and titanium dioxide in the, oh, sorry. Um, in this sunscreen, in the mineral sunscreen by CeraVe, it evens out and gets lighter and it really matches my skin tone quite evenly. And so that's why I got the, the dark one. And it helps me to just sort of play around with, with the two at the same time. So the darker one, I can add as little or as much as I like, and I can really play around with it more so than if I got the lighter shades of, the, of this um, Maybelline Beauty Balm, if it will focus. And so, yeah, that's why that's why I got the darker the darker tint, and I'll show you how I use that. But I also bought the Clinique. I keep dropping everything. So I also bought the Clinique BIY Blend It Yourself Pigment Drops, and these are this is iron oxides as well, and it's in a moisturizing base similar to the BB cream, but it's a lot smaller product, and it's just basically iron oxides. And I got the the lighter shade. I actually added this to the CVS Clear Zinc Lotion, the SPF 50 lotion that is um, zinc oxide and oct zinc oxide and octocrylene. So I I added the pigment drops, and I just stirred it around with a wooden spatula, and I got this color, which actually it works well with my skin tone. So I just played around with that a little bit and I use that occasionally. It, I don't really go out in the sun so I can't really tell if it like reduces my, my, my sunburn ability or my ability to get a tan or whatever, but um, it does provide a nice camouflage to the zinc. The clear zinc doesn't really provide much of a cast for me, but 
this really helps to reduce any any risk of that of having that cast. So yeah, this the the DIY blend it yourself drops works well, but I wanted to show you how I blend the the Maybelline BB cream with the CeraVe SPF 30 sunscreen. I also have the SPF 50. I'm just going to use the the 30 for this demonstration for this demo so you kind of see how I go about mixing them together. I just do it in the palm of my hands. Again, zinc oxide is ex extremely durable. This has zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, and I can't imagine, again, I'm not a chemist, I'm not a cosmetic chemist or a researcher, but I can't, based upon the research we have now or the lack thereof, I can't imagine combining one product that has titanium dioxide with another product that has titanium dioxide interfering with the formulation, especially when I'm using such a low amount, especially you can't, because it's going to be the same thing, titanium dioxide with titanium dioxide. I can only see it enhancing the product, not necessarily adding more SPF, but just enhancing it by providing it a tint against the pro-pigmenting waves of visible light. Okay, let's go ahead and do this before I drop everything and break everything. Okay, so I start by just getting, ugh, yeah, that looks really gross. So I start off by getting about a half a teaspoon of the CeraVe Hydrating Mineral Sunscreen on my palm, like so. And then I apply some of the, on top of that in my palm, I apply some of the BB cream on top of the, on top of the sunscreen. I actually use more than I think I may need. It comes out pretty dark, the, the deep, uh, the deep sheer tint. But when you mix it together with the, the white zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, it starts to even out and starts to get a lot lighter and you really have to play with it. You probably have to add a little bit more than you think you need. So let me just get in front of the camera so you can see. And I'm gonna go ahead and just add a line or so of this. I feel really, a line or so, that sounds sketchy. Okay, and then I just blend it in. See, it looks a lot darker than I think than my skin tone. But once you start mixing it together with your finger, and again, if you were working with like an Ava Benzone sunscreen, I feel like that would definitely, you definitely be impacting the stability of that Ava Benzone or, the, or those chemical filters. But the, since this is zinc, it's fairly stable, stable, photo stable and durable that I feel like just doing this in the palm of your hand isn't likely gonna interfere with the, the overall quality of the SPF. So here is the tint. As you can see, this is similar in color as the Dermatology Tinted Sunscreen or the um, Elta MD or the MD Solar Sciences Sunscreen. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply this to my skin so you can see how it goes on. And as you can see, it goes on lighter when you put it on your skin. So if it does look a little darker in your palm, it may not be, when, when you actually, when it's all said and done, it may actually blend in ni nice and smoothly, but it is a process. You definitely have to play with it a little bit, but this all really allows you to wear a purely mineral, physical blocking agent, like a zinc oxide and titanium dioxide sunscreen without walking around with a super significantly noticeable white cast. Okay, so as you can see, the sunscreen blended in with my skin tone quite nicely. And in, in contrast to just using the CeraVe mineral sunscreen on its own, you definitely cannot see that white cast. I mean, it is, it is decreased significantly or substantially. And I really like this because I was kind of at a loss for using the CeraVe mineral sunscreen because it was so casty on me and it was just so white. I just could not go out like that. And this like $7 BB cream from Maybelline, Maybelline Cosmetics is pretty much a, a godsend because Mineral, mineral sunscreens is, it's basically the holy grail of sunscreens for protecting your skin from the degradation that occurs from UV, UVA and UVB in your skin. So I definitely want to use mineral sunscreens, but I just can't when it has that significant white cast, or at least I can't go out in public like that. I would, I'll gladly wear it around the house. I'll gladly rock a white cast. If I'm going to the beach, which you probably would never find me there, you never find me by the pool or anything like that. But 
If I was to do that, I would more than likely wear the white cast, but day-to-day -day use, I think this is a great solution to actually using the sunscreens on a day-to-day -day basis in your everyday life without having walking around with that, that white cast. Plus you're getting that protection, that added protection from the zinc oxide. Ideally, you could probably even use this as a, as a foundation or under your makeup just to enhance the overall appearance and, and look of your skin. But yeah, I highly recommend this technique. And I also highly recommend that you only do this with products that are mineral only. So only using a titanium dioxide BB cream with a purely mineral sunscreen. I wouldn't suggest playing around with a chemical sunscreen, adding this to like a chemical sunscreen or anything like that. Cause I don't really, I feel like that would lead you into some issues with the SPF. Again, I'm not a researcher. I'm not a, a, a cosmetic chemist. So I can't really tell you for sure. And I can't really tell you for sure if this is going to be impacting the SPF of the mineral sunscreen, but considering it's all mineral titanium dioxide and you're just adding iron oxides the same way a manufacturer of a tinted mineral sunscreen would do, you're more than likely going to be okay and you're going to retain at least the lowest SPF that you have on the on your main base layer sunscreen like the SPF 30. So I hope this video has been interesting. I hope it gave you an idea of how to utilize the, the mineral sunscreens you have. I will leave a link down below, some affiliate links down below to the products that I used in this video so you can check it out for yourself, so you can try it for yourself. Report back to me in the comment sections below if you tried it and or if you've used any other sort of pigments or BB creams in your sunscreen regimen, I'd love to hear how you how you go about it. If you like this video, please hit the like button down below. Also stick around for future videos, hit the subscribe button as well. I'd love to have you here. I post skincare videos every other day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, as well as a weekend vlog on Sunday. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you in the next vlog. Bye.